This video is on dengue. Dengue is an arthropod-borne viral illness, which is transmitted through the bites of infected mosquitoes, which are the female Aedes aegypti or Aedes albopictus species. The incubation period for dengue is around 4 to 7 days, and there are four serotypes of, of dengue, which are the dengue virus 1, 2, 3, and 4. And the virus is flavivirus. So the risk factors of having dengue is if you live in or you travel to a dengue endemic area or dengue hotspot. And also if there is history of dengue in your family or neighborhood where you see that there have been some fogging activities going on around your house area. There are three phases of dengue, which are the febrile phase, critical phase and recovery phase. So for the first phase, the febrile phase, it usually lasts for around two to seven days, where you will experience high grade fever, signs of dehydration, and there might be some mild hemorrhagic manifestations like petechiae and mucosal bleeding from the nose or from gums. Critical phase is the most dangerous phase where we have to look out for. It is usually starting on day 3 of illness and it lasts for around 24 to 48 hours, so around 1 to 2 days. During the critical phase, there will be an increase in capillary permeability causing the plasma leakage and this will cause increasing hematocrit levels. This is when there will be clinical deterioration occurring in the patient and they might also have shock if it is severe. Dengue. They will have shock from the plasma leakage, severe hemorrhage, and also organ impairment in this critical phase. So it requires more monitoring in the wood. Whereas for recovery phase, this is when the plasma leakage stops and it slowly reabsorbs back the extravascular compartment fluid. So due to this gradual reabsorption of the fluid loss, there might be hypervolemia and pulmonary edema if the IV fluid therapy has been excessive. So it is important to control the amount of fluid to give to the patient. And in recovery phase, the general well-being of the patient improves. So the symptoms of dengue include high grade fever, lasting for around two to seven days associated with chills. Patient might complain of headache, myalgia and arthralgia, where the patient complains of generalized body ache. The myalgia is especially at the lower back, the arms and the legs, whereas the arthralgia joint pain is usually involving the knees and shoulder joints. There might be retroorbital pain, which worsens with eye movement. Rash, nausea and vomiting, weakness and also change in mental state, or even seizure and dizziness. So on physical examination, we have to check the vital signs where we might expect tachypnea, tachycardia, hypotension, and fever, or even hypothermia if there is shock. We have to assess the GCS score and the mental state of the patient. And remember to assess the hydration status. And urine output is expected to be reduced. And we can do the tonicia test, also known as HES test. And it is positive if there is more than 20 petechiae in an area of 2.5 times 2.5 cm after the test. So positive means suggestive of dengue. On general inspection, we should look out for rashes. The typical rash in dengue is island of white in the sea of red. This picture is showing that uh, the rash. So you can see it's like white patches in a sea of red. On the hands, we check the hemodynamic status by checking the CCTVR, which are the color, is it pale or pink, which is normal. The capillary refill time, is it prolonged more than two seconds? This suggests dehydration. Temperature is warm or cold extremities. Pulse volume, is it good volume or weak volume? Weak and shady or feeble or absent pulse. And also check the pulse rate. 
For the eyes, look for any conjunctival pallor or even look out for injected conjunctiva or jaundice, which suggests other differential diagnosis. For the nose and mouth, look for mucosal bleeding and also look for gum bleeding. For systemic examination, on cardiovascular examination, we look for raised diastolic blood pressure and narrow pulse pressure. Respiratory examination, look for signs of pleural effusion, which might be due to plasma leakage in the critical phase of dengue. Abdominal examination, check for abdominal tenderness because it is one of the warning signs, which I will explain later on. I also check for hepatomegaly and ascites, ascites to suggest there is plasma leakage. Nervous system, check for signs of encephalitis or encephalopathy. For classification of dengue, we can classify it into dengue with or without warning signs. And also, another classification is severe dengue. Severe dengue is when there is either severe plasma leakage causing dengue shock syndrome or the plasma leakage causing fluid accumulation, for example, pleural effusion causing respiratory distress in the patient. And other criteria of severe dengue is severe bleeding or severe organ involvement. For example, if it involves the liver, the central nervous system or the heart and other organs. So let's take a look at the warning signs. This is very important to note in patients with dengue fever. So this is a list of warning signs, which are abdominal pain or tenderness, liver tenderness. You can look at the laboratory results where there is raised hematocrit, suggesting plasma leakage, with rapidly decreasing platelet. Lethargy, restless or confusion, persistent vomiting and or diarrhea three times or more over 24 hours because this might cause severe dehydration in the patient. Third space fluid accumulation, for example, ascites, pleural effusion or pericardial effusion. And also spontaneous bleeding tendency, like nose bleeding or gum bleeding. These are the warning signs that we have to look out for. For investigation, we should do full blood count, also as a baseline to check the white cell count, the platelet and the hematocrit levels. Liver function tests expect to see increase in AST and ALT. Typically, the level of AST will be higher than the ALT level. Check for hypoproteinemia, which is a sign of plasma leakage, and hypoalbuminemia, which is a sign of hemor concentration. Look at the coagulation profile for prolonged PT or FTTT, low fibrinogen and high FTP, which are signs of the IVC disseminated intravascular coagulation. For renal profile, we have to check the bills and creatinine to look for any acute kidney injury and electrolyte imbalance such as hyponatremia and hyperkalemia. We do blood gas and serum lactate in severe cases to look for metabolic acidosis or hypoxemia. And also group cross matching in cases of severe dengue hemorrhagic fever or shock, just in case we need blood transfusion. The diagnostic tests for dengue are dengue NS1 antigen test and dengue serological test, test by ELISA, which are the IgM and IgG tests. There is also another test which we call as rapid combo test, which involves both NS1 antigen and the dengue IgM, IgG antibodies. So for the NS1 antigen test, it can be tested on day 1 to day 5 from the onset of symptoms in primary dengue. And after that, after day 5, usually we need the dengue serological test, IgM and IgG. So IgM is usually positive after day 5 to day 7 of illness. Whereas IgG is detectable after day 7 of onset of fever. For imaging investigations, you can do ultrasound to look for third space fluid loss such as pleural effusion, pericardial effusion, gallbladder, gallbladder wall edema, and intraperitoneal fluid collection. You can also do chest x-ray, look for pleural effusion, head CT without contrast. This is indicated in patients with altered level of consciousness.
to help us detect any intracranial bleeding or cerebral edema due to the dengue hemorrhagic fever. Moving on to management, in the emergency department, we assess the airway breathing and circulation, assess the hemodynamic status, and we have to look out for any shock to identify it earlier. Establish the diagnosis and the clinical phase. So we have to establish that it is uh, dengue, dengue fever in which phase? Either febrile, critical, or recovery phase. So we can establish the diagnosis by doing the rapid combo test or NS1 antigen test. If shock is present, immediate fluid resuscitation is required. If there is no shock, we can give fluid via the oral or IV route. And then later on, arrange for admission. And also remember to notify the case within 24 hours of diagnosis. For management in work, we just give adequate fluid hydration and also frequent monitoring of the patient's well-being using the dengue assessment checklist. So this checklist includes both clinical and laboratory criteria parameters. Clinical, we check the patient's general well-being, look out for any warning signs, check the vital signs, the mental status, and also monitor the urine output. For laboratory, we can do full blood count to check the white cell count, platelet, and hematocrit levels. And also, watch out for possible complications, such as bleeding, Hepatitis, cardiac complications like arrhythmia, myocarditis, dengue can cause myocarditis as well. Neurological complications like encephalopathy, which is the most common, and also others like encephalitis, and renal complications such as, such as acute kidney injury due to acute tubular necrosis, which can be due to prolonged hypertension or DIVC. So after adequate management regarding the discharge of patient, these are the discharge criteria where we can discharge a patient if there is an improve in the general well-being. They are air febrile, which means no fever for 24 to 48 hours. The white cell count and platelet are rising, hematocrit level is stable, and they have recovered from any organ dysfunction. So that's all for dengue. Thank you.